Okay, now you've got your data table and you've got your momentum calculations. Now let's let me show you how to calculate the uncertainty. In general, if the if the momentum is this, right, then the uncertainty of that calculation is going to be that divided by what the momentum really is equals the uncertainty of mass over mass plus the uncertainty of velocity over velocity, right? So if we calculate here is momentum here is uncertainty, right? Okay, so um, let's do this. Let's do the before, right? The momentum is 71.2, right? So I'm going to go, uh, right? The uncertainty of the momentum is to 71.2. That's going to equal the uncertainty of the mass over the mass, right? The uncertainty of the mass is 0 0.05. The mass was 309.9, so I'm going to go 0 0.05 over 309.9, right? And then the uncertainty of the velocity, so 0 0.0050 divided by what the velocity was, 0.2296, right? And then if you recall on these types of calculations, it's going to end up being 71.2 times this whole side here, right? I'm just going to go 71.2 like that, right? And then I'm all set. So that looks like 71.2, and I should use the unrounded value, but you know what the heck. Okay, times uh, 0 0.05 divided by 309.9 plus 0 0.0050 divided by 0.226. Okay, times Oops, I've already done the times. Okay. Uh, let's delete that. We're going to get a syntax error. So that's what I typed into my calculator. Right? Okay. Let me just double check it before I hit this. And hey, that's 1.56. So I'm going to say, I'm going to say that uh, delta P equals about 1.6 gram meters per second. So it's looking pretty good, right? 1.6 is enough to bring that guy down to this guy, right? And that's not, it doesn't even need to do that because um, this guy has uncertainty too, right? So let's look at the after, right? And for after, I'm going to use this guy here, right? So the uncertainty of momentum is to 70.5 equals, and then what's the mass? So I guess we got to add up the mass. What's so 309.9 plus 143.1? It's 453 even, 453.0, right? Right, and then the uncertainty is going to be, I'm adding this to this, so the uncertainty will be actually twice 0 0.05 or 0 0.1. Not a big deal if you miss that, but there, there's a little technical detail, right? 0 0.1 over that, right? And then the uncertainty was, was uh, 0 0.0034, right? divided by, and then the velocity was 0 0.1556, right? And of course, you know, we're going to do the same thing. I'm just going to bring this guy out there, 70.5, right? So my uncertainty is, let's do it on the calculator. All right, okay, so I'm going to go 70.5 times parenthesis 0.1 divided by 453, okay, plus 0 0.0034 divided by 0.1556. Have I got everything? I think I do. And that's about 1.6 again, right? They won't always be the same, but you need, you need to calculate them and show what they are, right? In fact, I'm so suspicious, right? I'm going to say this is 1.56. Right, 1.556 or something like that, 562, isn't that what it was? Yeah, you know, just so the physics teacher doesn't think I thought it was the same. But certainly if you show the calculation, right, we're pretty good. Now obviously, this value, if you look at these values here, okay, and the uncertainties, there's clear overlap here. I mean, this uncertainty of each one of those is like 3, adds up to 3.2, but these things are only... 0.7 apart, so obviously they're within the ballpark. This doesn't prove conservation of momentum, but it certainly supports it. 
but we'll talk about what to talk about in a second.